Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your Wednesday, your hump day, hump day, June 10th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading dated for the 10th of June, doesn't mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you at that moment. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading, yes? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't, yes? Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm going to s sneeze or not, okay. Well, I hope you guys are doing well and um, yeah. I don't really have anything else to say other than why don't we just get started? Yeah. I'm going to take a sip of coffee here. Yeah. I don't really have, I don't really have like an intro or anything for us. Hold on. But now that my allergies have, have said something, I'm going to blow my nose real quick. You know, what's so interesting. Normally I have pretty bad seasonal allergies, like uh, up until well, quite frankly, up until this year, it, it was even happening last year, um, it would get so bad during the, the spring, like right around my birthday, which is May 6th, um, it would get so bad that I couldn't even be outside for more than 20, 30 seconds without my face just starting, like just snowballing, just snowballing into the just, just eruption of snot and tears and sneezing and blah, and nastiness, right? This year, however, my allergies didn't kick in until I got here to Puerto Rico. Like, I went through basically all of spring in New York City with no allergies. Now, maybe the pandemic having shut things down helped because, you know, there was less um, pollution in the air, you know. But, but I'm still, I'm, I'm really allergic to, like, pollen, like, ragweed and all that shit right just the smell of cut grass is like enough to send me into like a whoa get me out of here you know that kind of energy right but my allergies didn't kick in until i got here so that's cool i mean it's just it's a it's a shift and it's adjustment and i was just thinking what is it here that makes it different but it's much more natural here so i guess my body had gotten used to that now it's getting used to the real good stuff i guess i don't know but I say all that to say I find it ironic that as soon as I start recording, my allergies want to want to show up, right? They're crashing the party here. Okay, anyway, there's your intro if you wanted one. <laughs> all right, kids. So let's let's get into it and see what we've got for you today. Yeah, here we go. There are the neighbors. Say hi to the neighbors. Hi, neighbors. <laughs> chickens, the, the chickens and the roosters, the, the hens and the roosters, excuse me. Okay, anyway, here we go. Focus, Eric. <laughs> Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday, our hump day, June 10th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So as I was just connecting there, um, I haven't really, I haven't really seen colors for the collective in a while. Maybe I just haven't been focusing on it. But today, I saw purple and I saw blue. I'm gonna give this three shuffles. So that was one. This is two. I'm see. I saw purple, and then underneath that purple, I saw blue. And I feel like what that's saying is there's some sort of communication. Um, that you're gearing up for, that you're pre 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 preparing for. Three, okay. Maybe there was some sort of communication that you received, uh, a message that you received from someone, a, a, a discussion you had with someone, an argument you had with someone, I don't know. And it's like you're processing that now. You're, it's like you're, you're seeking the truth, you're seeking the wisdom, you're seeking the understanding in that. I'm also getting that some of you are needing to speak your truth and you're well aware of it. 
in you're needing to speak your truth in some way and you're well aware of it, well, well aware of it and it's like you're you're working with spirit to come up with or like your higher self or like a higher point of view a higher wisdom whatever however you want to describe it um you're working with that with that energy the purple energy in order to understand what it is you need to say in order to um, understand how you can remain tactful in this in order to maybe even like flesh out a little bit of a script you know what i mean to to, to maybe uh, channeling the message and, and just getting it down writing it down on paper uh typing it up or something just to get it out of your mind and into some sort of tangible form so that you can greater understand it so that you can take steps to move forward something like that that's what i'm getting for you guys here okay so let's see let's see what you want to talk about what do you want to talk about today for the collective what's going on for the collective today okay well look at that we've got death we've got the queen of wands we've got the hierophant and we've got the devil whoa look at that ah ha ha there's the communication in the three of cups oh my 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 it looks like someone is vibrating their way is, is vibrating their way out out of some sort of toxic maybe even codependent i just did hear codependent um hive mind status quo point of view something like that you have you have the queen of wands here death was on the top of the stack when this all fell out but you have the death with the queen of wands okay and to me that is talking about you being getting into alignment all right um, and then you have the Hierophant and the Devil. And I really do feel like there is a, rec a recognition here. Um, someone is recognizing that they need to let something or someone else go. It's I just heard it's really just not worth it anymore. This now, now, with this Three of Cups here, I am feeling that there is some communication that needs to happen. Fleshing it out, talking things through. Okay. Um... But I'm also getting a bit of a hive mind um, um, mentality, and I feel like if you're the one that's if you're the one that's in this Queen of Wands energy. Now we're not talking gender here, okay? We're talking energy, and I see the Queen of Wands as the physical embodiment of the law of attraction, right? Because the queens in the tarot deck or the or feminine energy is receptive, um, masculine or the kings in the tarot deck are active, right? So when it comes to like say the king of wands let's start there the king of wands is very sure of himself knows exactly what it is that he wants and is not afraid to go after it okay um he's the one that's going to take all the action do all the things to get to get what he wants right like he like if he didn't if he doesn't have to rest he's not gonna okay he's that active the queen of wands is very similar she knows exactly what she wants too Okay, and she's not afraid to get it either, but she goes about it differently. What she does is she sits back and she aligns with it. She feels her way through it. She, 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 she lines up with the feeling of what she wants and then she allows it to come to her. Okay, so that's why I see the Queen of Wands as a physical embodiment of the law of attraction, because that's literally what you do when you're working with the law of attraction. What do you do? You set your intention, you find the, the good feeling vibration, and then you stay there and you allow yourself to stay there for as long as it takes in order to attract that which you want. Okay, now, of course, there, you're going to have to balance the King and the Queen of Wands. Like, you're going to, there are some steps, some action steps you're going to have to take in order to manifest whatever it is you want. And from that point of view, you're, you're, you're approaching the situation from a masculine side. We all have masculine and feminine energy within. But here, in this situation, we're talking about the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands has been coming out for the last few days, if you remember. And what this is saying to me is somebody here, probably most likely the person that's watching, I want to say about 90% of who's watching here is in this Queen of Wands energy. Probably the other 10% is probably like a, a cross watcher or some, something, someone trying to, I don't know, whatever. For the most part, for the most part, y'all are in this Queen of Wands energy and you are actively vibrating your way out of some sort of toxic codependent circumstance. All right. Now, here's the other thing that I was picking up on, because there could be someone that you're needing to walk away from. There's someone you're needing to leave behind. And there actually could be someone that you're needing to communicate with, right? Three of Cups. And that's what I was seeing with the purple and the blue energy for the collective. So I did pick up 
I did pick up that maybe the individual that you have already left behind or that you're in the process of leaving behind or what, whatever, whatever, they might have a lot of people around them still beating this drum of whatever this toxicity, co codependent hive mind mentality is. Like this person, I wouldn't say this person is very much of a free thinker. I'm not even sure they really want to be a free thinker. This could be a situation where they very much got their rose colored glasses on and they may be doing that same two of swords thing that, you know, you've been or we've been doing lately and blah, blah, blah. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hey, whatever. That's cool. Hey, you do you, boo, because I'm about to do me, says the Queen of Wands. She, she trusts. You don't got to worry about that, honey, boo, boo, child. I'm out of here. I'm doing what I, I'm doing me. Okay, but they could have a lot of people. I, I just feel like with this Three of Cups energy, this person or these people, this group, whatever, they could just have a lot of reinforcement within themselves or in and of, this, in and of themselves or within this group that they have, you know, this organization, this hive mind mentality. You know what? I want to go a little bit deeper. I want to see if I can get a second pull on this. So what else do we have here? What else? What else is going on today? Wednesday, June 10th, what do we want to talk about? What else do we want to talk about here, kids? Oh, shit. <laughs> There's the two of swords. Damn. Damn, to damn, damn, to damn, damn, damn. All right, cool. All right, cool. So you have the two of swords here, but you also have it with the king of pentacles and the knight of cups. Um... But honestly, I feel like this is you, this individual that's in this Queen of Wands energy. Here is a manifestation or, of the balance between masculine and feminine energy within you, okay? Um, and what this is saying to me is you have every right to have your blinders on. You really do. Because no, regardless of whatever is going on in this situation, regardless of what the hive mind has to say, regardless of what the elements or the circumstances of this codependent and toxic situation is for you, okay, you, in fact, are quite very much in alignment with who you are or what you need to be doing so that you can be who you are. You can express yourself further. King of Pentacles is an energy of being well manifested, well grounded, um, and well on your way. And here is that fixed. So, so here we go. Here we go. And it's and I li actually like the way I like that it's coming out as the King of Pentacles and not the King of Wands. You have the Queen of Wands here, which is setting the energy, setting the vibration. Right. If that's the, that's that's the passion within you. That's the drive within you. Because also keep in mind, feminine energies or the queens in the decks, those are cardinal. OK, so feminine energy uh, being cardinal is like the trailblazer, right? Who, who is cardinal energy within the zodiac? <laughs> who is a cardinal energy within the zodiac? Aries, Cancer. Who else? Wait, I'll be uh, Libra and Capricorn. OK, so these are all signs that are usually like very aggressive or very gung ho, very action oriented. Like we all I'm sure we all know an aggressive Aries. Some, some of us out here know what aggressive Aries, right? And I've got Aries energy very, <laughs> very strongly in my chart. It's either my Venus sign in the Western chart or it's my sun sign in the Eastern chart. So somehow, some way, once I've got my, my, my idea surrounding something, I'm going for it, right? Like you ain't, you ain't stopping me, you know? Okay. <laughs> but so this Queen of Wands energy is what has set the intention for you, right? The King of Pentacles being... Now, kings are fixed, right? The king of pentacles being a fixed sign or a fixed energy is now going to take the momentum and the path that the, that the queen of wands has set us on and continue and follow through with it. All right? This is like... Well, how would I equate this? Oh, the sun is coming. I gotta... Hold on, guys. I gotta adjust. I gotta adjust. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. So what I was saying was this the combination of this energy, and I'm glad I did that because I needed to take a, take a second to think about how I was going to think about my analogy here. But what I'm feeling for you guys is a little bit of like between the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands, this is like a bulldozer, the King of Pentacles, fueled 
by like raging hellfire with <laughs> with the queen of wands and i don't mean i don't mean like you know you're all going to hell or this is a bad thing no i'm not talking about that i'm just saying raging hellfire because that's intense like that's some intense shit right like yeah. but if you've got like this massive bulldozing type vehicle fueled by that yo good luck stopping that shit <laughs> okay but see see but there's also heart involved and open heart is involved here with the with the knight of cups and that just makes the situation that much more potent i mean it's one thing to have raging hellfire as you're at your disposal to you know fuel your endeavors and, wh and whatnot but when when you have that coupled with the passion and the alignment of the heart true and i see the knight of cups as like a true open like you know being emotionally vulnerable um being in, a, in alignment with yourself emotionally being in, in alignment with your own emotions and just I, I feel like being in alignment with your truth the truth of your heart and everything that's just that's only making this situation that much more more potent for you that's only making the drive that much more potent for you and so you've got your blinders on and you have every right and reason to keep your blinders on because at the bottom of the deck then here we have the seven of wands okay and to me this is saying you know you the seven of wands is uh, an energy of like keeping your guard up and keeping your defenses up and not letting anybody like, you know, try and take you down, you know, maybe even having secured the high ground and, and keeping it right. But also in this deck, what I see with the seven of wands is an energy. Oh, wait, let me do that. Sorry, I was moving the mic is an energy of um, lighting the way. I feel like you're activated. I feel like you have a light to shine. Obviously, we all have a light to shine, but I feel like there is there there is something there's some sort of light, truth and honesty, and maybe even integrity that you're shining here. And you have every right to feel this way. You have every right to be this way. You have every right to do this. And, and you're encouraged to keep shining your light. Because especially when we're talking about these codependent, uh, societal, toxic, hive mind situations here, um, the devil and the hierophant, also coupled with the three of cups, which was under the, on the bottom of the deck before, um, you being that individual, that source of light and truth and individuality even is really quite necessary, even, regardless of whether or not you're going to be around these people for an extended amount of time. And I don't really feel like you, you would want to be right. But even if it's just for a short little stint, you have no idea how much you being authentic and shining your light and keeping your guard up and choosing to honor your own self over what these people have to say, the Hierophant, right? Well, the Hierophant and the devil. All right, the more you choose to honor your own inner light, your own inner truth, and the truth of your heart, well, first of all, the more you're gonna piss people off, especially these people that are so that are so wrapped up in the community and, and looking a certain way and fitting into a certain cookie cutter mold. You know what I mean? You're gonna piss people off, but also you're gonna trigger them and you're gonna influence them Hope it's somehow, maybe not ultimately, maybe you're just like one, like the first step or one step of many steps to get them to honor themselves the way you, you've you decided to do so yourself. But ultimately, I say all that to say that you're ultimately going to help them in some way. Even if it, even if you piss them off so much that they find a way to kick your ass out of there. Good, good riddance. You still did your, you still honored yourself. You still showed, shown, shined your light. You honored your truth and you made it known and you may have gotten kicked the fuck out of there, but you did not back down. And that's really all that matters. Okay. Fucking right, y'all. Big and right. <laughs> all right. I'm... I don't think I'm going to do Lenormand today because we're already 19, 20 minutes in and I want to keep this under 30 minutes. Um, so I'm just going to get a closing message from the Tarot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to title the reading that today. A, uh, a bulldozer fueled by a... a by by the passion of an open heart and hellfire. <laughs> <laughs> hellfire.
fucking yeah, we're gonna do that today. All right, I'm gonna give this one last shuffle. And then we'll see what your closing message is. Yeah? Cool. All right. All right, spirit. So how do you want to close this out for us today? Oh, well, first of all, at the bottom of the deck, you have some reassurance here, ladies and gentlemen. The world. There you go. Completion is underway. I'm hearing masterful completion. Masterfully, I'm hearing masterfully completing this cycle. I don't think y'all realize how advanced you are. I, and in, in, and if, if you are having trouble or you're having difficulties or bumps in the road, blah, 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 or like people are giving you fits, that doesn't mean you're failing. That doesn't mean you've any, done anything wrong. That doesn't mean you're weak. Think about it. Think about, think about how much of a challenge you may be having right now. Think about how much you are facing, how, how big these obstacles look, how, how, how high you're having to jump or, or, or how much you're having to do just to overcome some shit. You wouldn't be in that position if you couldn't handle it. So stop doubting yourself, damn it. Shit. <laughs> Let's get your closing message, yeah? Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Closing message, please. Ooh, there's the devil again. Oh. Okay, we're going to stop there. Aha. -ha. Okay. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck. We have the moon. And it's funny because when I went to go pick up uh, the seven of wands that's on the bottom of the... Of the um, Wild Unknown Tarot, which is the deck I started with, the moon, I, I picked up a, a bunch of the cards by accident and the moon showed up. Okay, but now the moon is officially here. But we have the devil with the queen of wands, the queen of cups, the knight, uh, the knight of swords, the king of swords, two of pentacles, eight of swords, eight of cups, eight of wands. So uh, this is, oh, Oh, I see. 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 Now, I was going to say, these are all you here. Queen of Cups. Oh, I just saw 22, 22 on the counter. Queen of Cups, Queen of Wands, King of Swords, and the Knight of Swords. I feel like this is all you. But in reality, I feel like... <laughs> but, but really, really, I feel like this is you. Queen of Wands, Queen of Cups, King of Swords. And this... Knight of Swords here is mainly the opposition, is mainly the other side of the situation or the other side of the equation for you. And they're coming at you. They're coming at you with some mess, <laughs> y'all. Okay. But the advice here is if you aren't already in this energy, the advice here is keep your alignment, stay passionate, keep that hellfire going. But temper the hellfire with compassion, empathy, understanding, and unconditional love. Or maybe as much understanding as you can muster. Okay? And then keep a level head. And if they're really coming at you with some, with some serious bullshit, y'all, you may not want to respond right away. You may not even want to react. You may want to stay silent. You may want to keep it on a need to know basis because the other thing is that, yeah, they're coming at you with this mess. So you're in this energy, queen of wands, queen of cups, king of swords, and then you're having to fight back. You're having to answer back with some knight of swords shit, right? And that can get messy. But the thing, I think the thing about it is what spirit is saying is they're coming at you with that shit first. All right. So let them be their immature little selves. Let them, let them play their games. Let them run their mouths, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to give in to it because the King of Swords sees everything very, very clearly, just like the Queen of Swords does. The thing about the King of Swords is that he's way more diplomatic than the Queen. If we had the Queen of Swords here out, out here, y'all, heads would be rolling. Heads would be rolling, y'all. Okay, so, but we don't. We don't. We have the King of Swords. And so that's saying to you, I look, honey, I know this. I know they're popping off at the mouth. They're, they're, mm, mm. That's all right. That's all right. You don't have to engage with that. 
because you see it clearly for what it truly is. And here's the thing, and, and, and here, and okay, but let's, 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 let's look at it from the compassionate point of view, from the Queen of Cups point of view. You know exactly why they're reacting this way. You know exactly why. And it really has nothing to do with you. It's got all to do with them and their process or where they are in their path and their journey. And that's why it's not even worth it to engage. It's not even worth it to argue with them. It's not even worth it to, to react or even respond unless, like I said, on a need, on an absolute, ne absolute, on an absolutely necessary basis or on a need to know basis. You see very clearly what's going on here between the Queen of Cups, which is very intuitive, and the King of Swords, which is very clear headed and level minded and like is, well, at least when he's positive, we're talking positive aspect here. We're not talking reversal. OK, so let's think about it this way. All right. You see exactly what's going on here from the physical evidence to the intuitive hits, you know, you know, and that's why, you know, you don't need to be reactionary. I mean, being reactionary is never really good anyway. Right. But check it out with that. With that you have, whoa, oh my God, I just realized this. You have the two of pentacles, right? So this is keeping the balance, keeping the peace, making sure everything is steady, sturdy, and stable. And then you've got the eight of swords, the Eight of Cups and the Eight of Wands. Look at that. Look at all of those eights. Talk about abundance, y'all, first of all. Second of all, talk about a clear path ahead forward and talk about breaking free from some sort of mental prison. I mean, yes, honey. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, y'all. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know this is happening already, okay? Because you're in this energy. Queen of Wands which is the, the passionate hellfire that's really driving you, right? The Queen of Cups, which is that cool, compassionate and, and loving, unconditionally loving, nurturing and intuitive psychic side to you, right? And then there's the masculine in you with the, the, the King of Swords. It's very level-headed, very clear-minded. It is the, just the facts, ma'am, right? That's the King of Swords. Just the, ah, 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 just the facts, ma'am. Okay, okay. So you're here and you know, you know for a fact that you are in fact breaking free from this, which is why you know you gotta keep, you gotta, you gotta keep balance here. I mean, you've got three eights and you've got the two of pentacles, which has the infinity symbol on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this four eights right here because of that infinity symbol. And four is a number of what? Stability. <laughs> So then here, here you are, oops, well, I'm not going to pick all that up, but here you are with all of this standing in, firmly rooted in your stability, king of pentacles, right? And then here they are, the devil with the knight of swords. And the knight of swords to me is very much shoot first, ask questions later. Does that sound like these people? Or this situation, this circumstance that's coming at you with all kinds of mess and, you, and you're standing here with the King of Swords energy like, what the fuck is this, man? Mm -hmm. Hey, no me importa. Ain't my problem. I don't care. And it's not your problem either. Yes. All right. So I guess I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great day. Happy hump day to you. Um, I'm going to be plugging along here. I, <laughs> so I didn't get much work done yesterday. I had such, I had such an ordeal yesterday. I have, I have like a minute and 10 seconds. I can tell you guys a quick story. So a friend of mine out here had a car that she wanted me to go see because I'm working on getting a car right now. And I went down to the area that it was at and I was waiting for her and I was driving on this road and I drove too far off the paved road and it's right on the beach, right? And so the, the, the road like ends right on the beach and the, it's paved to a certain point. Um, but I didn't realize that I had drove off the pavement and I was like, okay, well at this point it was like, whatever, I'm actually gonna back up. Let me back up and park somewhere else. And as soon, you guys, my two front tires were off the paved road. As soon as I drove off the, I, I tried to back up, the ground underneath my two front tires gave way. And my car was like, my rental car was like stuck in a ditch. I had to call, I had to call a tow truck to come get me out. It was a whole ordeal, so I didn't get much done yesterday. 
I got to make up for it today. Anyway, <laughs> that was my funny story. I love you guys. And I'll see you. I'll look forward to seeing you for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.